Welcome to Ideal Gas Law. In this lesson, we're going to look at how pressure, volume, and temperature are related to the number of particles in a gas. In the last video, we looked at the combined gas law, P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. The combined gas law related pressure, volume, and temperature to each other, but it only works for a fixed amount of gas, so N, the moles of the gas, was held constant. So whatever the ratio is of pressure and volume to temperature, whatever that ratio is, it's dependent on the amount of a gas, or N, the moles of the gas. Another way of saying that is that the ratio PV over T is proportional to N, the moles of gas present, which tells us the amount of gas that we have. And because this ratio of PV over T is proportional to N, we can show that with an equation like this, PV over T equals n, the number of moles, times some constant. This constant gives us the proportionality that we see in this relationship here on the left. And it turns out that this constant that we multiply n by to make this relationship work is pretty special. So we give it a symbol, and that symbol is r. And r is the universal gas constant, or ideal gas constant. Now before we talk more about what actually the ideal gas constant or universal gas constant is, what this R represents as a number, I should point out that this equation is more commonly written in a different way. We basically multiply both sides of this equation by T to get rid of the T from the denominator on that side. Doing so gives us this equation, PV equals NRT, or PIVNERT. Now there's a couple things I need to point out about the variables in this equation. First, we generally choose liters to represent volume. So liters is our unit of choice for volume in this equation. N is the number of moles, so that unit is self-explanatory, just moles. And just like in all the previous gas laws, temperature has to be in Kelvin. So we're about to go figure out what this R gas constant is, but we haven't defined what unit pressure is in. So if we want to find out what R is going to be, which is where we're going with this, then we have to decide if pressure is going to be measured in atmospheres or in kilopascals. So let's see how we can now come up with this R, the universal gas constant. So here we have two cases. In the first case, we're going to find R when the pressure is being measured in atmospheres. In the second case, we're going to look at the R constant when pressure is measured in kilopascals. So before we begin, we're going to do a little bit of algebra, because who doesn't like algebra? Here we have our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. We're going to write this in terms of R. So R is equal to PV divided by NT. We're going to use this equation to figure out what our values of R could be. And the nice thing about this process is that it means that you never have to memorize what R is. You never have to memorize the ideal gas constant, or universal gas constant. If you can remember this process, you can always figure out what R should be. So let's run through this and see what we get for R. I have PV over NT equals R. And to find out what R is, I'm going to consider one mole of a gas at STP. So I'm going to start substituting values into this equation. The pressure at STP measured in atmospheres is one atmosphere. The volume of one mole of any gas at STP is the molar volume, which I know is 22.4 liters. N is the number of moles, and I just said that I'm considering one mole, so I just put one mole in there. And the temperature at STP in Kelvin is 273 Kelvin. And this expression, of course, is equal to R. So I can run through the calculations here, and I'm going to see that R is equal to, in this case, after measuring pressure in atmospheres, R is equal to 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters over moles Kelvin. Now this unit may look funny, but remember this is just a constant. So the units are put in there just to make the equation work. They don't actually mean anything, because this is not a measured value. This constant is a calculated value. Now let's run through that same process for when pressure is measured in kilopascals, and we'll come up with the R for that scenario. Again, we consider one mole at STP, 
So all of our numbers should be the same, except this time the standard pressure is measured in kilopascals, which is 101.3 kPa. And everything else should be the same. So this expression equals R. So now the R, universal gas constant, when pressure is measured in kPa, is 8.31 kPa liters over moles Kelvin. Now the ideal gas law is incredibly powerful when it comes to solving problems, but you have to make sure that you use the appropriate R value depending on how your pressure is being measured. And remember, you can always calculate the R value by using PV equals NRT and the conditions of one mole of a gas at STP. That wraps up our lesson on ideal gas law. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.